Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to graph polynomial functions by putting together all the information that we've previously seen about polynomial functions. Our first example, we're given g of x. We want to determine the end behavior, find the x-intercepts and the multiplicity of each root, decide whether the graph will touch or cross the axis, find the y-intercept, and then lastly we're going to sketch a graph of g. Whew. Okay, so first the end behavior. The way we determine the end behavior, we need two pieces of information from our equation. We need the degree of the polynomial, and we need to know the leading coefficient. What we care about with the degree is whether it's even or odd, and what we care about with the leading coefficient is whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so the degree of this polynomial, oops, I don't need a colon there. The degree of this polynomial is going to be determined by looking at each factor of x and seeing what its largest power is. So here we have x cubed. This x has the largest power of 1, and this x has the largest power of 7. So the degree will be 3 plus 1 plus 7. This is a degree 11 polynomial. What we care about, again, is the fact that 11 is an odd number. Next, we need to know the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient, so we're going to look at each uh, p, each factor that contains x and look at the x and see what the coefficients of x are. We have 2, 1, and 1, so the leading coefficient is 2. And what we care about is that 2 is positive. So this tells us, given that the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, that this graph will go down to the left and up to the right. We can get fancy and say, as x approaches negative infinity, g of x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, g of x will also approach positive infinity. So that would be the more formal way of saying it. I like just drawing the arrows because that's basically what we're going to put on the graph too. Okay, part b, we want to find the x-intercepts. So that would be like if we plug in 0 for g of x, this becomes a 0. Um, then because it's already in factored form, we want to look at each factor and determine what would make that factor equal 0. So we're going to say x-intercept, and then what uh, we're looking for is the multiplicity. What we really care about with the multiplicity is whether it's even or odd. And if it's even, then at, the, at that particular intercept, it will touch the graph and uh, touch the axis and turn back around. If it's odd, it will cross. So we want to determine, based on whether it's even or odd, whether it's going to touch or cross. Okay, so let's look at our zero. So our first one would be if we set this factor equal to zero. 2x cubed equals zero means x must be zero. The multiplicity, so x has a degree of three, and that would be an odd number. So the fact that it's odd indicates that it will cross the x-axis. Our next factor is x minus two. Set it equal to zero, and we would have an x-intercept of two. Uh, two has an exponent of one, or a multiplicity of one. One is also odd, so it will cross at 1. And lastly, we're going to take this factor, x plus 4, and uh, set it equal to 0. That would be x equals negative 4 if we got x by itself. Its multiplicity is 7. And because it's odd, it will also cross. So all three x-intercepts are going to cross, the, the, the graph will cross at those x-intercepts. Letter C, we want to find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, that means we would plug in 0 for x. Since we have an x-intercept at 0, that indicates that the y-intercept must be 0. If you don't believe me, if we plug in 0 for x here, that's going to get multiplied to everything else, which will end up being 0. So the y-intercept is going to be located at 0, 0. So we're going to sketch a very rough graph. This will not be even close to accurate, but it has all of the general ideas of what this graph should look like. So we're going to start by graphing the three points that we know, which are the three x-intercepts. If the y-intercept was different and on my grid, then I would probably also graph it. But it's not, so I'm not. So we have 0, 0, 2, 0, and negative 4, 0. And then we're going to use the information from part A to help us graph this. And if you're really uncomfortable with all of this, you can always plug in other values to see whether the graph is below or above the x-axis. So you could plug in negative 5 or negative 6. Then you could plug in negative 2. Then you could plug in 1 just to see whether it's above or below. But we're not going to do that because we're going to trust that we did parts A, B, and C all correctly. So because we know it's going down to infinity and this is the last crossing, we know that after negative 4, it's going down this way. It's going to cross the x-axis, but then it has to turn back around so that it can hit at 0. 
and then it's gonna turn back around and we wanna be careful. It's really easy to you know, make your graph go like out here and then it's not a function anymore. My graph isn't great, which they never are, but this is just a rough idea of what this uh, function g would look like. And actually what it looks like is that. <laughs> so you can see here it crosses at negative four. It goes all the way up really tall up there. Then it crosses at zero. It goes way far down. Woo! And then it comes back and it almost looks like a vertical line at two. That's how steep this graph is. Having the, the degree of 11 means that things are getting big quickly or small quickly. So while it appears to be vertical, I promise this is not a vertical line. It's just really, really big or getting big quickly. Okay, next we're given h and we want to do the same thing. So first we're going to determine the end behavior. We need the degree and the leading coefficient. The degree of this polynomial, there's no x up here, so we don't have to worry about this negative one half. We have x squared, so two. This would be x to the one plus one. This would be x to the third. So we have a degree six. And again, what we care about is that six is even. Our leading coefficient, x is one, x is one, x is one. So our leading coefficient is negative one half. And what we care about there is that it's negative. Because the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative, that means that as we get smaller and smaller and smaller, the graph will go down. And as we get bigger and bigger and bigger, the graph will go down. We can write that more formally as x approaches, I'm gonna say negative infinity, negative infinity, h of x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches infinity, h of x approaches negative infinity. So at some point the graph is gonna do all these weird things, that's why we look at the intercepts, but eventually in the long run, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's eventually it's just going to continue to go down. It's not going to go up anymore. All right, next we want to find the x-intercepts. And again, we have good news, which is that this is in factored form. So finding the x-intercepts is really nice. And then I do this as eboc, even bounce, odd cross. Or I guess it would be etoc since I wrote touch there, but I like bounce better, so we're going with it. Our first x-intercept, there is not an x-intercept here. There's no x. So our first factor with containing x is x minus 5. That would be an x-intercept at 5. And we have a degree, a multiplicity of 2. 2 is even. That means it's going to bounce or touch. So it's going to hit the x-axis and turn back whichever way it came from. Next, we have this factor here, x plus 1. That would be an x-intercept at negative 1. And it is raised to the first power. Multiplicity is 1. So the fact that it's odd indicates to us that it will cross the x-axis. Lastly, we have x plus 2, and that would be negative 2. Its multiplicity is 3, and because it's odd, it will cross there as well. Okay, letter C, we want to find the y-intercept. Now, we didn't have the y-intercept. It was not given to us because there were no x-intercepts that were 0. So in order to do this, we say, okay, well, we're going to plug in 0 for x. So that would be negative 1 half times 0 minus 5 would be negative 5 squared. 0 plus 1 is 1 and zero plus two is two cubed. All right, so I'm gonna ignore the negative half. This is 25, positive 25, positive one we don't care about, positive eight, half of eight, or yeah, half of eight is four, and four times 25 is 100, but that negative means it's negative 100. Guess what? We are not graphing the y-intercept because our graph does not go down to 100. So now we're gonna graph the three x-intercepts, five, negative one, a negative 2. And we're going to follow the directions that we're given. So we know that it's going down at negative 2. Before I start drawing, it's going to cross it through negative 2. So it's going to go down, it's going to cross, it's going to come back. At 1, negative 1, it's going to cross. So it's going to go down. Remember, this should be down at negative 100. So it's going to be come back. And then at 5, it bounces. So it's going to come up and bounce and come back down. And again, as you can tell, my graph is terrible. In fact, the computer does not like it. All right, good enough. So that's what my graph looks like. That's what the actual graph looks like. So I was close. So you can see it crosses at negative 2. It comes back up. It crosses down at negative 1. It bounces at 5, a really skinny bounce. Our last example, we have k of x, and we're going to do the same thing. All right, this one's going to be a little bit nicer for part A. Part B is going to be a little bit more work because now it's not factored for us, so we're going to have to do some, some additional work here. So the degree here, because it's not in factored form, the degree is 3, and the leading coefficient 
is negative one because of that minus sign. The fact that the degree is three, that's odd, and negative one is negative, indicates to us that this graph will go up to the left and down to the right. More professionally, we can say as x approaches negative infinity, k of x approaches infinity. And as x approaches infinity, k of x approaches negative infinity. So it's like the reverse. Okay, for b, uh, we to find the zeros, we're going to have to factor this. So we're going to set um, k of x equal to zero. So zero equals negative x cubed minus 2x squared plus 9x plus 18. The first thing I noticed about this, I don't like that negative. Um, so what I can do, because this is an equation, we have that zero, I can just divide everything by negative one. I could also factor out a negative one, but hey, it's an equation, I can divide everything by negative one. What dividing everything by negative one will do, it will change all the signs. Zero doesn't have a sign, so it just stays zero. That turns the x cubed positive, the two x squared positive, the nine x negative, and the 18 negative. Now this has four terms, and we're keeping our fingers crossed that it is factorable. Otherwise, we could use um, synthetic division. We could find the rational roots and then try synthetic division, but I think it's going to be factorable, especially since I created the problem. I know that it's factorable. All right, we're going to factor out the GCF here. That would be x squared, leaving behind an x plus 2. Here we need to factor out a negative. We're going to factor out a negative 9 to be exact. That's going to leave us with x plus 2, because remember, we're dividing both terms by negative 9, which is going to change the signs again. Now we're going to factor out the GCF. There's a GCF of x plus 2 between the two terms, and the leftovers, x squared minus 9. x squared minus 9, that's a difference of squares, so we can continue to factor it. That would be x plus 2 times x root minus root times root plus root. Okay, so finally we're at where we need to be. We have it in factored form. Yay! Now we can determine the intercepts, we can determine their multiplicity, and we can determine whether it's going to cross or bounce. So first x-intercept, we set this equal to 0, we get negative 2. Its multiplicity is 1, so that will be a cross because 1 is odd. Here we're going to set negative uh, x minus 3 equal to 0, that will give us 3. That has a multiplicity of 1, that means it will also cross. And lastly, we're going to set x plus 3 equal to 0, giving us negative 3. Multiplicity is 1. We're going to cross. Okay, last thing before we get to the graph, we are going to determine the y-intercept. We don't have a 0 here, but luckily plugging in 0 is really nice. This term goes to 0, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0. There's our y-intercept. Oh, it's so close to our graph, but we're not going to make it. The y-intercept is 0, 18. So we're going to graph what we can. Uh, negative 2, 0, 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. And then you can, you know, so this goes up to 11. It's pretty good. So we're going to say 18 is going to be like right there. We're actually going to include it this time. And now we're going to use the information. We know it's starting up on the left of negative 3. At negative 3, it's crossing. It's coming back. It's crossing through negative 2. We're going to go up to that y-intercept, and it crosses at 3. So the graph would look something like this, but of course, let's look at a more professional graph. Hey, that wasn't so bad, that was pretty nice. And we can see the three intercepts, there's negative three, negative two, positive three, and we can see that y-intercept, we see it crosses at all three.